So it's your boy in the crowd coming at you with another lesson today. Um, this lesson is going to be a little bit more uh, scriptural. I'm going to actually bring out the scriptures and uh, we're going to talk about some things. Um, so today's lesson is, uh, are we supposed to arm ourselves and train ourselves for war according to the scriptures? The reason I'm making this video is because recently, I mean, not even recently, the past 10 years, it's been going on. We have been targeted more and we are becoming victims more. Even the FBI came out with a statistic that black people are the number one targeted uh, hate, uh, targeted by hate crimes in America. So with all this being said, you know, you just have that little seven year old girl who was killed by a white supremacist in a pickup truck almost one year after another white supremacist, probably the same guy, uh, shot uh, another black male um, in that same parking lot of Walmart or close to it. Um, there's lots of things going on. You know, you have the sister in uh, in my home state, California, that had her throat slit on the, on the train. And then in Long Beach, not too far from where I used to live, you know, you had the brother who was killed in the bathroom at a family reunion by a white supremacist. So it's happening. It's happening a lot and it's happening more frequent. And we are always the victim. So today I'm going to try to keep it short. It's probably not going to be short. I don't know. I'll always say that, but uh, I'm going to try to. I'm going to bring out some scriptures and let's see if we are supposed to arm ourselves. Number one. Number two, if we are supposed to be training and preparing for what is coming, not only, you know, keeping the scriptures and stuff like that, but also training for war. And number three is keeping a firearm which is today's modern sword, a commandment. So that's what we're going to get into. So first, go to Numbers 1 and 3. Uh, numbers 1 and 3, and it reads, From 20 years old and up, or all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, though Aaron shall number them by their armies. So every male who is an Israelite who is 20 years and up, it's supposed to be training to be a soldier, a, a warrior. Uh, this was in the Torah. Okay, so in order to train for war, you must learn how to go about having war. And in order to do that, you must train with weapons of war. Um, it's different from owning a gun and owning a gun and knowing what to do with it. Okay, so just having a gun, just having a sword or whatever you have for protection, just having it is not enough. We need to be trained for war. Uh, every time Israel went out to war, you know, they didn't go out with just prayers and hopes that the Most High would deliver them. The Most High sent them with weapons of war. They were trained and the Most High was with them. If the, if the Most High didn't want you to have weapons and everything like that. He would have just sent you or he would have sent them out to war with just their hands and they would have still prevailed. But the most high wants us to be a warrior, uh, a warrior society somewhat, right? Because what good is a nation if you can't protect it? So that's one. Next, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 14 and verse 14. And it reads, and Abram had heard that his brother was taken captive and he armed in his trained servants born from his own house, 318 and pursued until Dan. So even Abraham, one of the patriarchs knew that he had to have trained men and he needed to arm them when it was time to go to war or when it was time to ride on our enemies. That's all the way back to Abraham, right? So what is different from then and now when we have enemies riding on us daily, constantly? We are always the victim of some kind of hate crime or some kind of violence, but we are perpetrated as the aggressor. Uh, I was watching a video about a woman that worked at McDonald's, uh, a, a Jake, uh, a sister, who was grabbed by an Edomite, pulled over the counter, and there's two Jakes right there that just stood and watched. And she's fighting this man by herself. What good are we if we don't protect our women? So this goes to show that, yeah, we, we are supposed to be armed, 
We're supposed to be able to go ride on our enemies when they come at us with stuff. Now, I'm not saying go out there and just go ride on everybody. And, but no, but when it comes your way, you need to be prepared to fight. You need to be prepared to do what you need to do, especially we need to protect our children and our women because that's who mostly they're targeting now. They were shooting us down in the streets. And they're now, they, uh, they, they're going for the weaker vessel. So, I mean, this shows here, Abraham, you know, he had his servants. They were armed. They, and it didn't say that he just took everybody. He took his trained servants with him to fight. And this is uh, the time when they were going to go get a lot when Lot was taken captive uh, outside of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, I mean, we can go scripture upon scripture. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to keep it short. Uh, but we're going to go scripture upon scripture. And we're going to see, are we supposed to be armed? Are we supposed to be training? And are we supposed to be getting ready for this war that we know is coming? This, this racial war, this... This not the final war, because we already know that the final war is already, we already won that. We know when Christ come back, Gentiles is going in chains, they're going into captivity, you know what I'm saying? And all the wicked jakes is just walking charcoal. We know that, but this war that's coming, where it, where it speaks of in Matthew, where nation will rise against nation and things like that, it's coming, and people against people. So now let's go to Nehemiah. As you guys know, I got my little notes here, you know, my precepts here. So if you see me looking out off to the to the side, is I'm making up my precepts. So we're gonna go to uh, Nehemiah. This is one of my favorite ones, chapter four, verse sixteen through eighteen. Right. So this is the time when we were rebuilding the temple. Now we are in captivity still at this time, just like our, just like now. We're in captivity right now. But let's see, in captivity, rebuilding the the temple, if our ancestors had weapons and were ready to get down with the business. Let's see. All right, so let's get it. Uh, Nehemiah 4 and 16, <coughs> 16 through 18. And it reads, And it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants were off in the work, and the other half of them held both the spear, the shield, and the bows. And the habergons and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They they which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those lands, every one of every one of his hands wrought in the work, and the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by was by me. So we see we see here. They're building, the, they're building the temple. Everyone is working. Everybody has a sword on their side. And either you're working or you're pulling what we call today, pulling security. Everyone had a weapon. And this is in captivity, people. This is in captivity. These weren't, you know, this wasn't when we were in our kingdom. Just like today, we are in captivity. You got to remember, um, and I'm going to be getting into those scriptures later. There have been Israelites who use their... Uh, what you would call citizenship to their advantage. And that's what we have to do. We have the second amendment. We need to use that second amendment to our advantage because when we don't, we, they know we're just prey. No white man is going to come up to another black man knowing he can win the fight. They're going to wait till they come when the, when the uh, numbers are in their favor. So you have to even up the odds. You have to, you have to with, uh, get what you call a force multiplier. Okay. So we're going to move from there. We're going to go to, uh, Acts, 22 and 25. And this is what I was talking about when uh, another one of our ancestors, Paul, he used his citizenship to his advantage. Although he was an Israelite, you know, he finangled the, uh, you know, hey, I'm a Roman. You can't do me like that. So let's go to Acts 22 and 25. I might speed this up, you know, to save time or whatever. So. All right, so Acts 22 and 25. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by him, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and condemn him? Oh, and, and uncondemned? So we see here, Paul, we know Paul is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. We know that. We also know that Paul was a Roman citizen. 
Paul was, uh, you know, being persecuted right here. And he said, hey, look, I'm a Roman, man. You know, you can't do me like this. It's not lawful for you to do this. I'm not I'm not condemned. I'm not, I'm not supposed to die right now. You can't do me like this, right? Well, it goes on. Let's go to uh, 23 and 27. So, you know, the next chapter over. Let's see where he went with this. So uh, 23 and 27. This man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then I came with an army and received him, having understood he was a Roman. So they was going to kill Paul. They knew he was a Jew. They was going to kill him. They were going to treat him just like, you know, how they say, we're going to treat you just like all you other black people. You know, like how they would probably treat me. And I could pull my, hey, man, I'm a U.S. veteran. I'm an Army veteran. I fought for this country, blah, blah, blah. I could pull that card and, you know, they, they laid back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So this is what Paul was doing. They came with an army to fight for Paul, right? Let's go to uh, 24 and 23. You know, one more chapter over. And, and let's see what happened. And, and he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or to come unto him. So they gave Paul liberties. That was like, all right, man, we, we, we know you wanted them Jews, but you know, you a Roman. So we, we're going to look out for you. That's what we got to do, man. We got the second amendment. We got the fourth amendment and the fifth amendment, you know, to protect us. The second amendment protects us, uh, well, gives us the ability to be able to protect ourselves and carry a firearm. You got the fourth amendment that, that protects us from the police. The police can only mess with you. Now take this from experience because I used to be a uh, private law enforcement. Uh, we only, <laughs> they only mess with people who know they can't, you know, don't know their rights. If you know your rights, you know your fourth amendment, you know, and you don't have the right to any search and seizure. And I know my rights and everything like this, you are less liable to be uh, mess with. Now you might get the wrong cop and he might, you know, just mess with you off top because you bucking up to him and he's law enforcement. But, uh, you know, we have to use our American citizenship to our advantage. They take taxes from us. We pay all these other things. We need to use our, uh, we need, we need to use some of these things to our advantage, right? So, um, let's go from there. Let's go to Luke 22. Excuse me. Let's go to Luke 22 and 36. I, I didn't remember. I didn't uh, tell you the, the uh, verse. All right. So Luke 22 and 36. This is this is before Christ was uh, crucified, before our Masiaki Hawashai was crucified, right? So this is at the Last Supper. What is he saying to him? He says, then he said unto them, but now he that have a purse, let him take it. And likewise, the script and he that have no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one, right? So this is Christ telling you, look, you know, you don't got a sword. You need to, you know, acquire some funds, do something to get you some funds. They need to go out there and get you one. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not what he was talking about. Yes, I understand. He was talking about something else. But you got to see the reaction. So let's go uh, to verse 37. For I say unto you, that this is that it is written, ye, must ye be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things considering him have not have an end. And they said, Lord, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said, Is it enough? This is showing you Christ had 12 armed bodyguards. They're like, Look, we got two right here, we got two burners right here, we got we got them things. And he said, Is that enough? You can take that too forward. Is that enough? Hey, you, you think swords is enough? Because yeah, having a sword don't mean you can know how to use it. You got to train. You know, you got to be proficient in this thing. Also, it can mean two swords. What's that going to do? You, you you need to build up on. You know, you need to get with the business. You got it. Two swords. You know, you need more than that. A lot of people are going to say, "Hey, yeah, this is him telling people." Uh, you know that what when he leaves, you know, you got to you know get strength and courage and all kind. Yeah, it can it can mean that too, but. How I'm reading it, I know it means this precept upon precept. When you want through all these precepts, we need to be ready for war, right? So, um, 
That brings me to my next precept. We're going to go to Luke. Oh, you're going to stay in the same chapter. 22 and 49, right? So, uh, oh no, we're going to go to 50. Now, this is when one of the apostles, you know, when they, when they were coming to get Christ, he drew a sword and cut off, bam, cut off the ear of the, uh, of the priest. Letting you know that, hey, when times come, we're going we gonna to have to get ready. Even though Christ did heal the man's ear, you know, because he knew what, what they were coming here for, prophecy had to be fulfilled. But at the same time, you see our brothers was ready to, they was ready to get down with the get down. They was, they was ready to uh, get with the business. Excuse me how I'm talking, but uh, just the way things is going right now, I'm just going, I'm telling it how it is. All right. All right. So um, verse 49 and 50, when they were about him and saw what, fo what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. We was ready to get down. We was ready to, you know, when somebody comes and threatens our family or something like that, we was ready to get down. And these wasn't even heathens. These was our own Israelite brothers. So what do, and you know, don't take me wrong. We're not supposed to be going against our brothers. But what I'm saying is at this time when they were about to take uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, we was ready to cut off another brother's ear. Why are we letting all these things happen to our brothers from Edomites, from Moab, from, from, from Hamites and all these other things. Why are we letting this happen? We need to be able to defend our people and defend our nation. Go from there. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Exodus 22. I'm probably going to speed up through, uh, and I'm finding the scripture. So this thing is going to be hella long. All right, Exodus 22, and we're going to see, like, okay, if, if, if we are in fear for our life, it's my broken in our house, what are we What are we commanded to do? What is the law? Because that's what this talks about, right? The laws and scriptures about if we're supposed to defend ourselves. So let's go to Exodus 22, verses 2 and 3. This is what happened. It's my break into your house, right? It's my come in here, break your house, trying to, trying to, you know, do whatever to you. Let's see what the law says we are allowed to do. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be but or it says if the sun be risen upon him, there shall no blood shed for him, for he should make a full restitution. If he have nothing, he shall be sold for his death. So, lady, you know right here, it's my break up in your house in the middle of the night. You know, you wake up, you go get your gun. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. You know, if you if you so happen to take that man's life, you know, maybe Esau's law will tell you you're wrong, but under the law of the most high, he's not wrong now. But if the sun is up, you can see his face, you can see who it is. Hey, you know what I'm saying? That dude gonna have to pay restitution to you. He's gonna have to make uh, uh follow the law, whatever he took, he's gonna have to pay, you know, something he fall back. You know, he's gonna have to do that. Right? So this is letting you know, hey, how you gonna kill somebody if you ain't got no gun? If you ain't got no sword. You know, back in the day, it was a sword. How are you going to kill somebody? Or what you mean? You just going to beat them to death? Yeah, good luck. I mean, it sounds good. But uh, let's go from there. Let's go to uh, one of my favorite scriptures. One is when it's dealing with this. Let's go to Psalms 144. All right, Psalms 144, uh, 1 and 2. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdued my people under me. Teaches my hands to fight, uh, my hands to war, my fingers to fight. You can't tell me that we're not supposed to be armed. You can't tell me that we're not supposed to be ready for battle. You can't tell me that we're not supposed to be uh, 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 fighting our oppressors. You know, uh, what was it Ecclesiastes seven and seven? 
says, you know, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Sorry about that. I had to make some room for the video. It's getting a little bit too big of a file. But um, yeah, Psalms 144, 1 and 2, those, that's one of my favorite scripture when it comes to dealing with how we're supposed to be a nation. You know, we are a nation of a priest, but we're also a nation of warriors too because we're commanded everybody 20 and up that we be ready for war and we be trained in war. Like that goes back to Numbers, uh, the first chapter, right? Um, so the last, uh, last two scriptures I'm going to end off with because uh, this video is getting a little bit big. And, um, I don't want it to, to get too long and too big. I still got to edit it and everything. But um, it's going to be, let's go to Ezekiel 25. Ezekiel 25. Uh, and And verse 12, Ezekiel 25 and 12, all right? Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because that Edom has dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, our power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Timon and they... And they of uh, Dedan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel, right? Us, right? And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith Yahweh. Okay, so what does that mean? How are we going to do all that? This is a prophecy. How are we going to do all that? With no weapons. Come on, man. You got you to you use it up here. You know, you can't let these people just trick you into thinking to be a docile people, to being somebody who's just going to be submissive and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that, right? You got to know the scriptures. I know a lot of camps preach against, oh, don't get no gun. and The most High is just going to deliver us. He's just going to say, poof, and then we're just going to be some big mighty man. No, he didn't do that for David. What would make you think he's going to do it for you? Are you greater than David? Are you greater than Abraham? No. It's saying what it says. Okay. It's getting to be the point now where Esau is coming out. He's bold. Trump got him emboldened. They don't care no more. They are doing to us what they used to do to us back in the day. Time to fight back. Time to stand our ground. Time to get trained. Trying to, time to sell all them Jordans or whatever y'all got and go ahead and get you a gun, get some training. Contact a brother like me. I know I'm not the only one. Get you some get you some some knowledge about what's going on. The last scripture I'm gonna leave you with is uh a scripture, one of my favorite ones too. I'm probably gonna get it inscribed on one of my um one of my ARs, but you know, this is another thing of what's, what's coming to happen in the future. It's a, it's a prophecy. But how can it happen without any weapons of war? Because we already know Esau ain't gonna give us the kingdom. We're gonna take it. We're gonna take the kingdom. Daniel chapter 7. All y'all knew I was saying, you already know where I'm going. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take. We're not going to be given it. We're going to take the kingdom and possess it forever, even forever and ever. Esau not going to say, here, man, we, we know what we did to y'all here. Just... We know you're the rightful people of the Most High. We, we we know this is your kingdom. Let's give it to you. No, we're going to have to take it. We're going to have to take it by force. It ain't going to be by fighting, punching and stuff. We're going to be out there killing, murking, doing what we got to do. We're going to take this kingdom. Second Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of the next world that follow it. Well, how are we going to get that next world? Of course, Christ is going to come and, and you know... All praise to the Most High. It's all going to happen through him. But we got to do our part too, right? We got to be our good servants and, and follow these words and, and, and not just pick and choose what we want to follow. Because if you're not keeping the law, because we went into Exodus, we went into the Torah where this is law. Christ told us that we must do this in the New Testament. This is law. You are not keeping 
the whole law. I repeat, you are not keeping the whole law if you're not doing this. And with that, you know, I'm going to leave it to, you know, you guys to decipher if I'm right or wrong. You got the precepts. Just rewind the video. Get all the precepts. Look, see if I'm telling the truth. Look, see if I'm lying. You know, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 between 1 says prove all things. You got to prove. Prove if I'm right or wrong. But now you've been warned, you know. You know the truth. You know what you need to do. I'm not telling anybody to go out there and just start murking Esau or nothing like that. But when it comes time, you need to stand up for your nation. You need to stand up for your wife, your kids, you know, your people. You got to do what you got to do. I'm tired of seeing all these videos of, of these women being attacked and all these jakes just standing around, you know, with their cell phones out not doing nothing. You know, that's that's, that's garbage, man. Y'all will kill each other, but you won't kill the white man. You won't kill the Asian man. You won't kill the Arab man. You won't kill the African man. But you'll let them do everything to us and you fight against, amongst each other. Think about it, man. And with that, I say shalom. My praise to the Most High Yahweh and the Son, our Masiaki Yahweh Shai. Speak for justice, seek the truth. See the trouble is with Jacob, but they hit the proof. We all sleep, but Christ came for lost sheep. It gets deep. Milk for baby, let get me salvation. That's the point of why we.